Hey, welcome to Internet Roundup, brought to you by Stuff You Should Know. Ta-da. Mm. Brought to you? So we're bringing it. Yeah, we do the Stuff You Should Know podcast, the wildly successful show, <laughs> and we also do this garbage. Yep. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not garbage. No, it's great. But it's not the same. As what? Stuff You Should Know. Oh, the podcast? Yeah, much different. We get a little silly in here. We show things like on-the-job injury in real time. <laughs> we don't edit that out. No. In fact, I had a leg cramp in the last episode, and Josh's first reaction was not one of care. It was, we got to leave that in there. <laughs> <laughs> I cared. You cared that we left it in there. <laughs> I'm glad you're feeling better, although I'm worried about you. Crazy. But that was last week. <laughs> right, that was a whole week ago. It's been great. Ever since. All right. So we found a couple of things. Josh did. Um, the first uh, interesting story is this teenager named William uh, Goddery. Uh, he's Canadian, French Canadian, it sounds like. Sure. And he did a neat little thing. He's only 15 years old, and he thinks he might have discovered a uh, lost Mayan city. So he thought he did until... Scientists said, you know, you got it wrong, kid. Well, all right. Let's just let's build it up first. Then, oh, oh, then sorry. knock him down. <laughs> I like to follow the anti Hitchcock school of suspense. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, so what he did was, and it was really pretty smart. He um, he spent hours and hours looking at diagrams of constellations and then comparing them to ancient Mayan civilizations. Like yeah, like settlements, cities. Yeah. cities. yeah. And he found that they, if you overlay them. There's a correlation there. Yeah. It's pretty neat. He basically put star maps onto Earth maps yeah. around the Yucatan. And um, he found that of 22 constellations, these matched up, which is pretty substantial. Mm -hmm. That's significant. And then a 23rd constellation, uh, he found that two of the three stars matched cities, but one didn't match anything. It just matched some. Aha. Yeah. And this kid went, let me take a closer look at that article. But he said it in French. Or that uh, that place. Yes. But yeah, he said it in French. Yeah, let's dig into this map a little more. And um, so being a 15-year-old French-Canadian kid, he contacted the Canadian Space Agency and yeah. said, hey, you got any satellite photos of this area? Here's the coordinates. And being the Canadian Space Agency, they said, sure, young man, here's all this material <laughs> that our spy satellites took. Yeah, we're not doing anything else. All right. Uh, and so what they found was they think, you know what, under this dense jungle canopy, they think, thought, um, that there was a ancient Mayan pyramid with 30 smaller structures surrounding it. And possibly the biggest Mayan city ever discovered. Yeah. I mean, this was a pretty good lead. And, um, obviously it was in, in the under, you know, under the canopy, so you couldn't actually see it. Um, but it was, it was they like saw these the, structures, geometric patterns. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and like clearly geometric, obviously human made yeah right and so he was like i'm going i know i'm a kid but i found it it's mine <laughs> i'm precocious so you have to basically uh we need to find a way to raise money to go on this expedition of which i will be on and then everything seemed neat until experts got wind of it mm -hmm. and kind of patted him on the head well, and said no. Frankly, the media deserves a tremendous amount of blame for this. They took this kid's story and ran with it, like, like it was truth. Yeah, right? like the kid had discovered an ancient, lost, unknown Mayan city. Yeah. using star maps. When in reality, this kid had used star maps to plot cities in in uh, ancient Mayan cities, mm -hmm. and said potentially that he may have found something. Right. Uh, but the media got a hold of it, and yes, so experts came out and said. It's yeah. not what that is. Actually, I'm sure what the stories read was uh, teenager um, uses star maps to study ancient Maya cities, and you won't believe what he found. <laughs> right, exactly. And then you click on it, and it's like a new Mayan city. And then you click again, and everyone says no. Right. So, what did this guy say? He thought it was um, actually a Milpa cornfields. Yeah, a 10 to 15 year fallow cornfield. Not even an ancient cornfield. Just some corn. Yeah, for a little while, there was also a uh, parallel um, reporting that the kid had accidentally uncovered a, a, a illegitimate grow operation, a marijuana oh, grow operation. That would make sense. That was wrong, too. Huh. The internet as well. 
the yep. media, of which we're no part. So they didn't prove yet that this was a cornfield, right? Or did they? No. It's just suspected to be. It's in a very, very, very remote area of Mexico, mm-hmm. which means that it's going to be very expensive to get there. And no one's going to do it. But people who study this kind of stuff have said, here's a picture of a fallow cornfield, mm-hmm. and here's the what the kid found. Right. It's probably a cornfield, but he hasn't been disproven yet. All right. Well. For the, the experts have said- it's probably not it. So they're basically saying we're not going to spend all this money to go out and find a cornfield. I I don't know. I don't know if somebody will go look or not. You know, surely yeah. somebody lives around there and they can just contact them and say, "Can you do us a big solid?" There's a 15 year old French Canadian kid yeah. who <laughs> has this idea. And then they're like, "They found our grow up." It was funny to watch this this story unfold, though. Yeah, because it kept having updates. Yeah. You know, like but today it, like, it's updated, tomorrow updated right. with more and more skepticism. But like this Gizmodo article is titled Teen Discovers Lost Maya City Using Ancient Star Maps. Updated. Nope. Right. Too yeah. bad for him. But hey, he's a go getter. Oh, yeah. And Kid's like, great. Yeah, he's smart. He's going places. It's not sure. his fault. It's the media's fault. It is. Uh, and now we're moving on to just down the road here at Georgia Tech University. Um, where my brother works, and my nephew now goes to school. Oh, man, that's great. Pretty neat. That's where Yumi went. Uh, that's right. I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah. Great school. Um, students there are, are uh, taking an, well, not there necessarily. They're taking an online course. It could be anywhere. Sure. But Georgia Tech School of Interactive Computing has an online course. And here's the deal. They have TAs, teacher's assistants, that manage the uh, Q&A, like the online forum, right. for asking questions. And they're flooded with Tens of thousands of questions every year. I think there's eight for this one class. Eight TAs? Yeah. Yeah. But that wasn't even enough. So no. what the teacher did very sneakily, uh, his professor, uh, Ashok Gol, G-O-E-L, mm-hmm. said, I'm going to design a fake teacher, uh, an artificially intelligent teacher, right. TA based on IBM's Watson, sure. to answer these questions. And I'm going to give it a name. Uh, it's going to be a lady named Jill Watson. Based and, on Watson. Yeah. She's and we'll related. S- we'll see if we can fool the students. And because it was an online course, he didn't even need to like get a cardboard cutout or anything. No, nope. He didn't need to put a mop on the head of <laughs> right? like, the short circuit robot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. Uh, and it worked. It fooled all the students. And they were um, not upset or anything. In fact, uh, one of the quotes was, my mind was blown. Uh, one was, can Jill come out and play? Mm-hmm. A little creepy. Um, but it, they said it was <laughs> uh, uniformly positive, the response. Yeah. I imagine because they were getting good answers. Yeah. So they, they trained Jill, and it took a little while, but they trained her not to respond unless she was seven, 97% sure that her answer was correct. Yeah. And apparently at first some of her answers were bizarre. Yeah. Like, you know. Because it's keyword related, right? Yeah. And yeah. she would get stuck on keywords right. and would give information that just didn't quite jive. Uh-huh. Um, but- over time, they they hammered it out, and the the reason why they were able to hammer it out is because this professor said that with online courses, when you expand the uh, class size, mm-hmm. you don't necessarily you, you expand the the questions asked, the number of questions asked, right? But you don't necessarily expand the different questions that are asked. Yeah, like you get a lot of the same questions every year. Exactly, which makes something like Jill Watson just perfect mm-hmm. for that kind of thing. And the yeah. fact that she fooled these students, and these weren't dumb students, they were actually, the class was knowledge-based artificial intelligence. Yeah. So they weren't, it wasn't like these were biology students who have no idea what artificial intelligence is. Yeah, they should have been looking for this, to be it, honest. And it got them. Yeah. But from now on, you can bet the students are going to be looking for Oh, yeah. Yeah, because he plans to do it in the future. Um, I, I doubt if he'll try and keep it a secret in the future, though. It'll probably just be like, here's Jill. Yeah, this is your new AI. Meep, mark, meep. It's a cardboard cutout of Kathy Ireland wearing like a Budweiser <laughs> bathing suit. Jill Watson. You just said that because that's the first thing you see when you wake up every day. <laughs> cardboard cut. Of yeah. Kathy Ireland. <laughs> Throw that away. Um, Pretty neat. That's it. Go Yellow Jackets. Yeah, go jackets. Uh, I'm a convert because of my wife. I, I it's not like I'm like forget UGA, but I'm I don't hate Georgia Tech like I used to. Nah, who cares, right? <laughs> Get a little old and none of that stuff matters. Yeah. 
Like, why hate the amazing university down the street from us? Exactly. Well, because it's not UGA. Yeah, their colors are different. Anyway, that's uh, this has been Football Talk with Josh and Chuck. And uh, we'll see you next week on Internet Roundup. <laughs>